Caleb here, and I wanted to talk about three things that are very important that can actually help you in your manifesting journey. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was affirmations and what you can do to actually use affirmations to help you along your journey. Just remember, techniques don't create, your state of being does, but you can use techniques or tools to help elevate your energy, your state of being, whatever you wanna call it. The second thing I wanna talk about was attachment, and the third thing is actually curiosity. And you're gonna to wanna to stick around to the end to really understand what curiosity is in a manifesting aspect and how it can actually really help you create the life you want to live. So the first thing when it comes to affirmations, always remember this about affirmations, scripting, firming, visualizing, any sort of technique, whatever it may be, shadow work. Remember, the power is not outside of you. Something outside of you doesn't create, you create. So the techniques do not create. It's shifting at the internal level that creates. So if a technique is helping you shift, or an affirmation in this case, that's what happened. Yes, it helped you shift, but it was the actual internal shift that produced and changed the result out here. So when it comes to your affirmations, I want you to always remember and think about them this way. And let me give you some examples. So to anybody that's manifesting money, what sounds less resistance to you or like it has less resistance? I'm going to be a millionaire next month or I'm taking actions every day to become a millionaire. Someone who's manifesting love. Next month, me and my SP are going to be together. Or if you um, don't have a specific person in mind, you just want a relationship in general, next month I'm going to find the love of my life, right? Either or. Okay, so that. Or what if things worked out for me and my SP actually does love me? Or the love of my life, if it's a general person, right? Nobody, nobody specific. If the love of my life showed up next month year, six months. Here's another example. Anybody who wants to do weight, right? Maybe weight loss or weight gain. Maybe you're trying to gain muscle mass or something. I'm going to gain 50 pounds of muscle by next month. Or I'm taking actions to create the body that I want to have. I want to experience life with. You see, affirmations, the biggest mistake I think people make with them is they try to use affirmations that are too far away from how they're currently feeling about their current reality. So you have the person who's trying to say over and over again, I am a millionaire, when they've got $20 in the bank and, and $5,000 in debt, right? So put yourself in that person's shoes and think what sounds easier. I'm going to have a million dollars next month and all my debt paid off or every day I'm taking actions to become a millionaire. You see the difference? So that's what I want you to remember about affirmations. It's not the way you word them. It doesn't have to be worded as if, as if the thing is right here, right now. You can word affirmations as posing them as a gentle possibility. What if things worked out for me? What if this is possible for me? Or even future tensing something, right? I'm going to become a millionaire one day. The tenses don't matter when it comes to affirmations, right? Because remember, they don't create in themselves. It's how they make you feel. So use affirmations that help you release resistance, not affirmations that create more resistance or make you feel like you're just trying to suppress emotions and feelings. Now, the second thing I want to talk about, really important, and that's attachment. One of the most important things that really blew my mind, that changed my life in manifesting, is this right here. This one sentence. 
When you are attached, nothing works. Scripting, visualizing, affirming, all techniques, shadow work, inner child work, self-concept, healing, none of it works when you are deeply attached to the outcome. Why? Because manifesting is about stepping into the energy, the feeling of having that experience. And no previous experience in the physical world is required. You see, the great thing about manifesting is you don't have to believe something for a 100% fact in order for it to happen, right? That absolute expectation and faith. Just believing that it's possible is enough. So the reason in my own life I practice detachment and many clients that I've worked with do this is because when you are severely attached, especially to the outcome, you're constantly in the energy of, I don't have. And manifesting is energy and perception management. And you don't need to physically see, smell, hear, or taste, or touch something in order to start tapping into the feeling of it. The five senses are not nearly as powerful as the sixth sense, the feeling. So, Always remember that about attachment because it's kind of like the Buddha said, attachment breeds misery and suffering. So you always want to think of your manifestations as preferences. I would prefer this to happen, but I'm not going to die, right? I would prefer to go to the store and find a really cool blue shirt over a green shirt, right? But I'm not going to die if the store doesn't have a blue shirt. I'm not going to be emotionally destroyed if the store doesn't have a blue shirt. That's how you want to think about all manifestations, especially the ones that are life-changing, right? Life-altering, you know, a marriage, a lot of money, a new house, right? The life-altering things. And so that ties in with the third thing, which is curiosity, you see, one of the greatest ways to start releasing attachment and to just avoid putting yourself in unnecessary attachment in future desires you may not even know about yet is to go about everything in life from curiosity. And you can start practicing this in your own life. So for example, remember how I just talked about the first thing in this video was affirmations, right? But not just affirmations, you can also include um, any sort of technique, affirmation, scripting, affirming, visualizing, even self work, inner child work, shadow work, subconscious work, self concept, whatever you want to call it, right? Whatever you're working on. If you will go about all of those things from the energy of curiosity, that's going to greatly help. Because you see, when you're in the energy of curiosity of what might happen, or let's see what happens, you're not over here in fantasy, positive expectation, it needs to happen right now, or I can't feel better. But at the same time, you're also not in super negative expectation of, you know, it happens for everyone but me. When you're in curiosity, you're not in negative or positive expectation. You're in the middle. You're just curious. You're neutral. And a lot of people don't understand that neutral energy is very powerful for creating. You know, when I started practicing curiosity in my own life, I would do it for the most basic things. Going to the grocery store and just being curious to see if they have the things that I'm looking for. Even if I've gone to that grocery store 500 times before, right? And they have that same thing. I know exactly what shelf it's on. I'm not going to set up the expectation of it. It has to be there, right? Because then when I get there and maybe it's not there, somebody five minutes before me took the last one, I'm bummed out, right? Just curiosity. So start going through your life through curiosity, affirmations, or any visualizing that you're doing or scripting or any self-work that you're doing. Just do it from curiosity, to see what happens. So again, 
Curiosity is not in super positive attachment or in super negative expectation of it never happens for me. It's in a very neutral, calm state. And I'm telling you, it'll help a lot of you if you start to approach things in life from curiosity. I'm really serious. So just wanted to make that video because these three things all kind of tie together. But again, in the first part, when I talked about affirmations, you can just replace affirmation with anything, right? Scripting, affirming, visualizing, a, a water method, right? All these people, these techniques people do, right? If your relationship to the technique isn't feeling good, then you want to take a step back, right? So I am a millionaire versus, well, what if I could become a millionaire one day? What if it's possible for me? Or I'm gonna become a millionaire one day. So yeah, just wanted to make that video. Um, if anyone is interested in any courses, I'll leave those in the description down below.